Hey guys, it's Jamie from Futsal Miniatures here, and I would like to welcome you to the fifth episode in our Futsal Friday series, where we take a look at quick and easy methods to help gamers get their models onto the tabletop quickly. Today's video will look at highlighting and shading our miniatures so that they pop when gaming. Now I haven't showed every piece of painting on these figures, as I simply follow a rule of threes. It would be quite repetitive to show you everything. This rule of threes means that I use three shades for every area, a shadow, mid-tone and highlight, pre-mixed on my wet palette as shown in episode 3 where we painted flesh. Now as a tip, I will use a limited palette on these miniatures, so for example on the priest, I used a couple of brown paints on both the cross, linen and robe. This helps unify the piece, rather than have them look like a ton of different tones have been slapped on. In the description below, I have written the three paints used for each area, so you can follow these steps at home if you wish. To begin with, we are going to start with painting the priest robes. For this mix, I use several different shades from Vallejo model colour. German camo black brown, German camo medium brown and khaki. The basic process is to paint dark colours all over the miniature and concentrate our lighter shades towards the higher and smaller areas in order to create interest and work with the sculpt so that detail is visible from the player's perspective. In order to make some of the details on the robe pop, I take Army Painter's dark tone ink and brush this into the recesses and tears of the robe so that they really stand out. A good tip is to try and focus our lightest highlights next to our deepest shadows. So around the edges of these ink tears, I would attempt to do an edge highlight with pure khaki. This is because being next to a light colour will make shadows look deeper and vice versa. If you have trouble identifying where to paint highlights, a good tip is to hold the model directly under a strong light source, such as a lamp, and see what areas the light hits. You could even take an image of this to refer back to when painting your figures. I continue to make my way through to the lightest colours on my palette until I am happy with the amount of contrast. One thing that I would suggest, and something that I am still learning myself, is to be less concerned with specific names of paints and perfect mixes, and instead be more concerned with creating tones and hues that interest yourself as a painter and gamer.
Now in the case of the priest, I felt my blends between the different layers could be smoother. Therefore I decided to use a glaze to blend them together. The glaze is an extremely thin layer of paint over the top that is also transparent. Unlike a wash, we do not pull it, we allow it to dry evenly. Unlike a wash, we do not pull it, we allow it to dry evenly over the entire surface area. Unlike a wash, we do not pull it, we allow it to dry evenly over the entire surface area. And it ties the colours underneath closer together. To make the glaze, I mix glaze medium from Vallejo and army paint a strong toning in a one to one mixture. A glaze can be likened to looking through a filter or a sheet of coloured glass. Once the glaze has dried, I feel there is a good amount of contrast to see all detail from the tabletop and a lot of interest on this characterful figure. I then wanted to show how this same method could be applied to other areas of the miniatures without taking you through each individual layer on each individual figure. Therefore I decided to tackle a colour Mini Wargamer's Fear using this method of free paints. I decided to paint a washed out faded red on the cloak of one of the Irish heroes. I used Vallejo black red and two different shades that are both called red, however one has a German designation number following it. I followed the exact same process as I used on the priest's robes, however there was no need for any wash or glazes due to the smaller, flatter surface areas. Vallejo model colours range is absolutely great for this method of painting due to the sheer amount of different colours, shades and tones available. Coverage is good and drying matte is great for modellers as we can have a true estimation of the final product rather than waiting for varnishing. Speaking about varnishing, this will be the topic of the next Futsal Friday so if you have any questions about varnishing be sure to come back then. We also appreciate any suggestions or feedback in the comments and really hope you have been enjoying the series so far. Finally, on areas of high texture like the crucifix, you may decide that layering is not the approach you would like to take. In this case, I instead decided to use washes and dry brushes. I base coated the area with Vallejo model colour beige brown. before mixing both strong and dark tone inks on the miniature itself. Using two different shades of inks in this way can quickly create different shades and tones without us needing to think too hard or spending too much time on them. I concentrate the darker ink towards the inner parts of the crucifix which would have the most shadows and also have a build up of dirt and grime.
I then dry brush the crucifix with beige brown and khaki. The khaki will tie the crucifix into the priest's robe and bag, which both had khaki in their mixes. I concentrate the dry brushes of the khaki towards the edges of the crucifix, which would be lighter, and in my opinion, be more warm, due to being extremities. Hopefully this video has shown you that you do not need a million and one paints in order to do a good job. I hope you enjoyed this week's Footsore Friday, and we'll be back for next week's when we will take a look at varnishing these figures. We have reached the end of acrylic painting and will in the future instead look at special effects and several different ways of basing. All comments, subs and likes are appreciated and I'll see you next time. Footsaw Miniatures, 28mm historical miniatures. Footsaw takes pride in the highest quality metal models, available in the UK, US and worldwide. Footsaw believes in delivering high quality products. Find out more at footsawminiatures.co.uk.